Okay, so let's talk about adding and subtracting rational expressions step by step. Now the first thing that we want to do when we are adding or subtracting rational expressions is to make sure that we have a common denominator. And you can see in this first example, I have a common denominator, which is awesome. So once you have your common denominator, all you're simply going to do is apply your operation, either subtraction or addition, to the numerators. And you can just write your expression under the common denominator, in this case, x minus 1. So therefore, I could have x minus 1, which is my common denominator. right? They both share. They both have x minus 1 as a denominator. And then I can just write x plus 1 minus an x plus 2. Now, again, notice I automatically wrote the parentheses. But a lot of students will forget to write the parentheses. And they'll just write it like that. And be careful, because if you write it like that, you, we're not, that's, this is just saying subtracting x. We need to subtract x plus 2. So we're going to apply our parentheses to make sure we subtract the whole expression, which ends up giving us a x plus 1 minus x plus 2 all over x minus 1, which then again simplifies here to 3 over x minus 1. Okay, So I know I kind of got a little bit smaller, but I wanted to make sure I had enough room um, over here. So um, that is going to be if you have the common denominator. Now what if you don't have the common denominator? If you don't have a common denominator, then you need to find the common denominator. And typically, you want to find the least common denominator. So to do that, you need to find the least common multiple, which is, again, a lot of least commons are going on here. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's go back old school for a second. What if I had 1 third plus 1 fourth? These do not have the same denominator. So if I needed to find my least common denominator, I need to find the multiple of 3 and 4, particularly the least common multiple of 3 and 4. That means the smallest number that 3 and 4 evenly divide into. Now with numbers, we can easily just list the multiples and then find the numbers. And that's typically like back in the day how we used to do them. But now that we're going to be expanding here to you know, polynomial expressions, it might not be as easy to understand the, um, the, the list of multiples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about this a different way. And one way we can always find a multiple is to multiply our two denominators. Because 3 times 4 gives us 12. right? So if 3 times 4 gives us 12, then we know that 3 divides into 12 and 4 divides into 12. right? That has to, be, that has to work. So one way to identify a common uh, multiple is just to multiply your products. So you could say our LCD here is going to equal you know, 12. That's the smallest number that 3 and 4 both in divide into. And if you do a little mental math in your head, you can see that that is true. But what about when you have some algebraic expressions? What are the list of multiples of x plus 3 and x plus 4, right? And it's like, I don't know. Like, how do I divide? How do I know if it divides into it? Do I do long division? Do I do synthetic division? It can be kind of crazy if you start thinking that way. So what I like to do is just think about how did we obtain 12 here? We just multiplied our denominators. So why don't we do the same thing with these al algebraic expressions? I could say the LCD is just going to be the product of x plus 2 times x plus 4. Right? And again, it makes sense. Because if you multiply you know, 3 times 4, you give you 12. We know 3 divides into 12 and 4 divides into 12. If I multiply these to give me this, then I know x plus 2 divides into that and x plus 4 divides into that. Now, I'm going to leave this in factored form to make things simple. Um, but you could expand that out if you wanted to or if the problem on a test or a quiz or for your teacher wanted you to do that. Now, <clears throat> what we want to do though is since we, don't have our, um, since we don't have our common denominator, we need to figure out which multiple do I need to multiply each fraction to obtain this common denominator. So on the left hand side, you can see that we already have x plus 2, but I need to multiply it by an x plus 4. And then you need to make sure you do that on the top and the bottom to create what we call equivalent fractions. Over here, I need to multiply by an x plus 2 on the top and the bottom. Okay. Now that I have that, I can just go ahead and apply a distributive property. And hopefully you guys can see that now my denominators are the same. They're in different order, but that's OK. Um, apply my distributive property. That's an x squared plus 4x divided by, oops, I'm sorry, let's do plus a 3 times x squared, or x plus 2, all over a x plus 4 times a x plus 2. Since the common denominators, I only need to write them once, right? So we have a little distributive property. Oops, I forgot to apply distributive property. Let's actually apply that. That becomes a 3x plus 6. OK, now all I can simply do is just fish my answer one more time, just by combining my like terms in the numerator, which would be adding the 4x and the 3x. So therefore, my final solution is x squared plus 
7x plus 6 all over x plus 4 times x plus 2. All right, now we could go ahead and write this in factored form to kind of see if this would simplify, you know, at all. Um, but for this case, we're just going to simplify here. This does not simplify. This does factor into x plus 6 times x plus 1, but nothing else will simplify. Um, nothing, nothing else simplifies down. But we always want to, whenever you combine them, to try to see if anything would be simplified out. You know, it really kind of depends on how the final answer needs to be written. But there's really nothing else we could do here. You could also talk about the excluded values, which I don't want to cover in here. But a lot of times, um, when we're applying al um, algebraic ex or I'm sorry operations with rational expressions, we need to identify the values that make the denominator equal to zero, which in this case would be negative four and negative two, and over here would be positive one. But for this video, I'm just going to focus on the step-by-step -step operations of adding and subtracting, because I think it gets a little bit more difficult when we have a common denominator. Cool. When we have two different denominators, cool, multiply them. But what about over here? What about if it looks like I'm going to, to multiply this, this looks like it's going to be pretty difficult. I don't want to multiply these to find my common denominator, right? And again, remember the idea is we're trying to simplify these. We're trying to combine things. So if I have something like this and I automatically think that I'm going to start making this a little bit more crazy um, or more difficult, I look to this and I say, well, this is a quadratic trinomial. Can I factor this quadratic trimal? And hopefully I can. In this case, I, I absolutely can. This is x plus 2 times x plus 1. Now, this brings back to a little bit of memories. If I had 1 half plus 1 over 6, you could multiply 2 times 6 to get your common denominator, right? Like we did the, one, the 3 and the 4. But is that the smallest common multiple? And the answer is no. Because, um, 2 times 6 does give you a common multiple of 12, but 6 is the least common multiple. Because 2 divides into 6 and 6 divides into 6. Another way you could think about this is just like how I factored this down. What if you factored 6 down into 2 times 3? Do you guys see how they already share a 2? So all you need to do is multiply by a 3 over 3 on this side to get a common denominator. And that's the exact same thing we're going to do over here. Over here, I have an x plus 2 and an x plus 1. Over here, I just have an x plus 2. So what I'm going to need to do here is multiply this side by an x plus 1. All right. So then, kind of following the same steps that I worked through before, I want to, now I have my common denominators. I'm just going to want to make sure I distribute this negative 2x to both the x, um, x plus 1. So therefore, this is going to be written as a 5x minus 1. And then we can do a minus 2x squared and then a minus 2x. So I'm going to distribute this negative 2x. Just make sure you keep that as a negative 2x, not a positive. And that's going to be all over my common, fact, or common denominator of x plus 2 times x plus 1. All right, now let's go and combine our like terms. You can have a 5x minus 2x is going to be a 3x. We can rewrite this as a negative 2x squared plus 3x. And then you could say a minus 1 all over a x plus 2 times an x plus 1. All right, And again, we want to be able to go and see, you know, can you go ahead and um, would something like this go ahead and factor out? So if you factor out this negative, and you can say 2x minus 3x plus 1. All right, And then what two numbers multiply over here? So then this would be a x plus 2 times a x plus 1. All right, and then you could say, well, can I further factor this down? Is there two numbers that multiply to give me 1, add to give me with this negative 3, where one of the coefficients is going to be 2? Well, let's just go ahead and take a look here. So I could say a um, 2x times an x. Let's see, they're both going to be 1 or negative 1. Looks like they both need to be a negative 1. And it looks like that can be factored down, but it's not going to be anything that's going to simplify out. So this would be an x plus 2 times an x plus 1. Okay, So it does factor down, but it doesn't simplify out. All right. So again, let's go ahead and review our steps. First step is going to find kind of common denominators. If they don't have common denominators, then go ahead and obtain the LCD by either multiplying them or finding your co terms in common. Then, once you have your common denominators, go ahead and apply the operation to the numerator. Go ahead and simplify. 
and then look to simplify or factor out your terms in your numerator and denominator so that they could possibly be divided out. All right, in the last example, I just want to cover one more example because a lot of times students will make their mistake here and they'll see this and they'll say, oh, the LCD is going to be like a 2x, right? Because they both have a, or I'm sorry, a 4x because 2 divides into 4, right? And then x divides into x squared. But you have to be careful. In this case, you want to write this in factored form. This can be factored out as a 2 times x squared minus 1, which is technically a difference of two squares. OK? And then over here, yes, this has an x, but this x is not in common with these two x's. These two are part of this expression. So therefore, here, we could just break this down into, um, you could see my LCD in this problem is going to be a 4 because 2 divides into a 4, and then it's going to be an x times an x minus 1 times an x plus 1. Okay, So we're actually going to have three expressions back in on here. Now for here, I already have my 4x. So all I simply need to do then is to multiply by the x squared minus 1 over x squared minus 1. And then over here, I already have the 2 and the x squared minus 1. All I need to do is multiply by another 2x. So I kind of ran out a little bit of space here, but that's OK. Um, you can see here, this ends up just being my final answer. There's nothing that's going to combine, because here is my quadratic and a constant, and here's my linear. So I end up just getting a x squared plus 2x minus 1 all over my common denominator, which I can just rewrite here as a 4x times x minus 1. So I'll just write a 4x times a x squared minus 1. And there's nothing, though, um, that go ahead and simplifies um, down to my numerator. So that's not going to simplify further. And therefore, the only thing else, though, that I do realize is they both do share in x. So now you can see that I can simplify this by, a, oh, no, I can't simplify that. That's not separated by multiplication. So you can see how these are separated by addition. So therefore, you can't simplify it. So therefore, that's going to be your final term. The excluded values would be x cannot equal plus or minus 1 and x cannot equal 0, because those are the values that would make that 0. And I don't think I talked about the excluded values here. Maybe I did. But the excluded values over here would be negative 2 and negative 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, that helps you out. Cheers.